Ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna need you to buckle up because today's Wi-Fi battle is a little bit of a doozy. And by a little bit of a doozy, I mean shit gets crazy and it's very, it's an interesting one. Um, looking at my opponent's team, seemingly harmless, got some interesting stuff. You always love to see uh, when I'm able to find opponents that are bringing, you know, kind of unique teams. I'm of course working with the OG squad of misfits, trying to make shit happen. Let's get into it. So of course, since I have exquisite taste and very strong Pokemon, I decided to lead off with the Walmart brand Ho-Oh, as he leads with the Steelix. Now of course, Firo cannot physically scratch this big ass steel snake, so I have to get my ass out of here, but I'm basically just here for the U-turn pivot regardless, and I can get myself a better matchup. Um, so I decided to go for the U-turn, Choice Bandit does a whole bunch of damage, the Steelix is never gonna recover from what he's seen today from this bird. And I decide to go into my Vileplume. Now the reason for this is because I'm starting to realize Vileplume actually has a pretty solid matchup against this dude's team. And if I can use this correctly, I can really poke some holes in this dude's squad, make it a lot easier for my team to sweep later on. Uh, plus, I can go safely for the Sleep Powder here. He does have two switch-ins to that with the Parasect and the Tropius. However, then I can just Sludge Bomb the absolute living shit out of him after that. So that's not a safe option for him and he has to let something be put to sleep. So. He decides to go into thick ass Deoxys. Damn, it, he's thicker than a bowl of oatmeal, and I'm trying to get me a cup. But I haven't seen a, a def defense Deoxys since like fucking Nom, and I really don't know exactly what this thing wants to do. I also know that Violent Plume is important, and I don't want this thing to really stay in here. Plus, I can't touch it too much, um, but I'm running the risk of that thing having a psychic move. So I decide to go into old Clay Blade, and while this thing takes a nap, I can kind of assess the situation with this Deoxys. I know that. It's probably gonna be more physically defensive. Um, I also know that it's not that much of an offensive threat. So I can just go right for the Stealth Rock of my own here, which is gonna be nice. It's gonna be able to break some potential Focus Ashes, whether it's like the Parasect has it, something like that. But I wanna get my rocks up just to start to punish switches here. Now I can also rapid spin his rocks away, but I decide rather than doing that, at least for now, I'm gonna go right for an Earth Power just to kind of scout some damage here. I could potentially get a special defense drop and start to whittle this thing down. I don't know if it's gonna be carrying recover. I assume that it is because why wouldn't it? But also I'm just gonna continue going for that because, you know, he doesn't really have much that he can hit, uh, you know, freaking Claydol with, unless it's like knock off, something like that. But he actually wakes up, goes right for the mirror coat. And that is nice because it doesn't do a whole lot to me because I'm not doing a lot to it. But it also tells me a little bit about uh, what this dude wants to do to me here. So he actually ends up getting burned by a flame orb, which we were not able to see because it got put immediate to, immediately to sleep. And the reason for the burn is because it is carrying Psycho Shift. That is a move that basically just passes the status condition to the opponent. You know, Claydol doesn't care too much about being burnt anyway, so I figure that's actually fine. I go for the Rapid Spin here because I'm like, you know, this thing is just going to probably recover anyway, and I'd rather just get rid of that Stealth Rock now. Um, but it's at least, I now know half of this thing's moveset at this point, plus if it's carrying recover. I know I don't have to be super worried about this thing damaging me in return, but the fact is that I have mons that are not horribly good at offense, and <laughs> when I'm going against like the most defensive motherfucking alien in the world, I'm gonna have myself a hard time. But I decide to switch here, I decide to go into the Fero, because I'm thinking maybe he mirror coats here, if I can catch him on a mirror coat turn that would be great, but he ends up just going right for the recover, and now I'm pretty much back where I started, except now this thing has a burn, and it has the ability to just psycho shift that to whatever it wants. And now I'm realizing, holy shit, this thing is gonna be an absolute problem. So Fero has nothing to do, other than just go right for a U-turn here. Uh, it's gonna do, you know, a, a nice solid chunk, respectable chunk, for our favorite normal flying bird here. And I obviously have to go into something who doesn't care to be burnt because the Psycho Shift is looking pretty obvious here against uh, one of my physical sweepers. So I decide to bring in the Triangle. He's looking nice and round today, not as pointy as usual. Uh, it does go for the Psycho Shift here. And Electrode always finds himself burnt. I don't know what it is about bringing this Electrode, but he's straight up just a magnet to burns. But, I mean, that's fine. He doesn't really care about either having health or being burnt. So as long as I'm alive and faster than everything on his team, that's kind of what this thing is here to do. But, uh, I'm just gonna go right for the Thunderbolt. I'm thinking maybe I grab a kill here. And with the choice specs, I'm not quite able to get the kill. And that has absolutely got my nutsack in a vice grip. I really wish that that was gonna <laughs> grab the kill there. Um, that would have made my life literally so much easier because that yeah, would have knocked this thing out. I wouldn't have had to deal with freaking Deoxys all damn day. Uh, but now, you know, I find myself thinking, damn, Triangle, you really blew it there. But now he knows I'm gonna go for another Thunderbolt here. Um, and I'm expecting him to switch into Steelix. I'm thinking I'm gonna switch into Ballin real quick as per usual. 
And unfortunately the Intimidate does happen on the Deoxys because I switch first, obviously because I'm faster, and he does go into Steelix. So at least I get the prediction correct. However, I start to realize that Quillfish kind of has a shit matchup here because I'm actually only carrying Aqua Jet as my water move for this thing. Because it's mostly just a Swords Dance kind of sweep set. But uh, I'm like, you know what? I'm going for it anyway. Fuck it. I've got this far. Bond's going to do some damage here. And I'm able to, you know, do pretty much nothing to Steelix. But I do at least chip that thing to the point where now I'm thinking maybe Rampardos uh, can, can pick it off. Potentially Drill Run Firo if I can get a little bit more damage off on this thing. Uh, but it actually shows me he does go for the Stealth Rock there. Now, I don't want to take an Earthquake, even though Quillfish is floating like 12 feet above the ground for whatever reason in this game. I can still get hit with Earthquake, so I'm thinking I'm just going to go right into Claydol, who is in fact levitating. So, he actually ends up switching himself, and he brings in Parasect. Now, he gets a pretty solid matchup here in that, uh, of course, I don't really care to take bug moves, and I probably can't hurt him that much. Uh, although, thank God, I am actually carrying Ice Beam on this Claydol. So... If there's anything I know about Parasect, he's going to either start to go for a Swords Dance, he's going to maybe potentially go and expect a Switch, go for a Spore. I'm actually just going to stay in here go for a Rapid Spin. I'm thinking, you got those Stealth Rock back up? I say, no, 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 I don't like that shit here. I spin my Beyblade, and now they're gone. So, uh, that's pretty solid. And here, he actually ends up going for the Spore. So, he does expect the Switch, which is great for me, because I basically am able to get rid of that Stealth Rock for free. And uh, shout out to this dude for using Parasect, for real. I don't think there's like anybody else other than me and this guy that have ever used Parasect. And uh, I only, it's almost a shame to kill this thing. I was like, should I just let this thing sweep me? Hell no, I'm going right for the Ice Beam. Uh, this crab, mushroom, grass motherfucker is not sweeping me on my watch. Because that would be embarrassing, I swear to God. So, he actually ends up going for the Swords Dance. He did not realize that I have Ice Beam. Uh, I pretty much just have Ice Beam coverage on this thing for dragons. Turns out it works well against uh, weird mushroom crabs, too. So, even with the Swords Dance here, I am faster. He did not know about the Ice Beam, so he has to get his ass out of here. He decides to save the Parasect for later, uh, potentially work it for Death Fodder, or just maybe even get a Spore off on something later. So, he ends up going into the Gardevoir. Now, this is the Pokemon I'm mainly afraid of, and the reason for that is because I know Vileplume does great against this man's entire team, except for against this thing, and that is pretty bad, because this thing is actually pretty threatening to my entire team in general. Um, I mean, I have things like Choice Scarf, Rampardos, potential Aqua Jet from uh, the Quillfish, but regardless, this Gardevoir is going to be an absolute McCastle, and I really need to kind of take care of this thing if I want my win condition, aka Vileplume, to make stuff happen. So. I decide to make a switch here, and I'm thinking, who is useless as shit most of the time? And that is Electrode, who <laughs> I know can come in. Um, I can kind of either force a switch into the Steelix. I can tr potentially go for a Thunderbolt, but my thought process here is this. Electrode basically does nothing against this man's team. It's very situational in terms of whether or not Electrode is going to do well. I, I can tell generally from the start if it's going to be useful or not. AKA, if they have a ground type or a special defense wall, I can't really, you know, apply too much pressure. So I'm thinking, you know what, Triangle? It's time, buddy. It's time. You thought Triangle was here to play games, but I assure you, Triangle does not fuck around. Look at that damage from that explosion. <laughs> I find myself burnt in exploding on this thing more often than not. Um, but I also got him to kiss the air, so he looks like an absolute bozo, plus L. And now at least I get a free matchup. The main reason why I explode there, I was kind of expecting him to go for a switch into Steelix, so then I could get a matchup on that. But at least now this allows me to go into Rampardos. And I'm thinking maybe I catch this Gardevoir at this point. So I go for the head smash. Running the risk of him switching into Steelix, I'm fine with it. I'm going to go ahead and give somebody some good head today. It turns out the Parasect is the recipient, and this thing is basically just here for death fodder. Now, this thing also potentially affects Spore, so I swear to God if I catch something from giving this thing head, I swear to God. Um, I, luckily, I do not. I'm able to take care of the Parasect. That thing is gone, and we're finally we're starting to make a little bit of progress. This guy has a weird mix of, like, very fragile glass cannons and also, like, the most defensive Pokemon in the damn game. But... Now he gets a free switch into Dugtrio. Now here's where it gets a little bit interesting. Of course, I am arena trapped in here. I am stuck. There's nowhere I can go, and I just have to stay in here and go for the head smash. Now it turns out I actually outspeed because that means this is not a plus speed nature Dugtrio. He's running adamant Dugtrio as I am Jolly and Choice Scarf. So that's like the only scenario where I'm able to outspeed Dugtrio, and I get the KO because the hot dogs you can't handle the heat. So. 
gave they gave that thing good enough head to where it just straight up dies, and you absolutely love to see it because Doug Trio is a very scary revenge killer. And now I get to save Rampardos for later. I was really worried about losing that thing, but now it's kind of my best answer for uh, the Guard of War. So he goes into Steelix on the free switch. I just go right into Vile Plume because. Um, and kind of the best thing I can do against this Steelix. I don't really have many options as he actually ends up going for the Dragon Tail. And uh, he says, I don't like this matchup, bring in the fucking bird. And the bird's like, really? I always have to deal with this guy? Out of all things you could switch me into, it's always the giant steel dildo, I swear to God. So I end up staying and I go for the drill run, thinking maybe I grab a kill, maybe he goes for the Dragon Tail. Uh, instead, I just give him lunch and he ends up going right for a fucking head smash himself on the turn where I did not expect him to attack, thinking I was either going to switch or U-turn. I expected maybe a Dragon Tail. But he does go right for the Head Smash, and unfortunately, Firo is going to go down. So, poor little fella did not get his his chance to shine in this match, but it's fine. I've got the absolute legend. Nuptup is here and ready to make stuff happen. So, I can just go right for a Giga Drain here. It will be able to take care of the Steelix, but he says, I'm going to swap one defensive motherfucker for another, and goes right into... Deoxys defense once again. So this thing comes in, takes some stealth rock damage, applies, applies a little bit of pressure, and the Giga Drain is going to do a whole bunch of damage, actually. It's looking like, hey, another one is able to kill here. But it turns out you are mistaken if you think this flower is going to be able to outspeed this Deoxys, who is literally built to just be a wall. And I am, in fact, slower than this thing. The burn damage brings it to 1 HP, and I swear to God this Deoxys is absolutely the bane of my existence at this moment in time. And it was right about here where I realized that I'm going to do everything it takes to be able to kill this. And I swear to God, this match is coming down right to it. I'm not holding anything back. Of course, with him being able to outspeed, it allows him to just go right for the recover. And I find myself in a situation where I would want nothing more than to just absolutely smack this thing back into space where it belongs. Um, so I'm just going to stay in here, go for some sludge bombs. He, turns out, is going to stay in and just continue to click recover. Uh, the strategy with this Deoxys has generally been to take advantage of that pressure ability, where I use double the PP per turn, giggity, and um, essentially trying to stall me out. But I'm thinking, I'm going to stay in here, Flower does not give up, and I'm just going to try to get a nice little critical hit with Sludge Bombs. Unfortunately, he's doing more health recovering than I am doing damage, and I'm really finding myself like, I don't know, this isn't horrible for me because he can't really touch me, because if he had something like Psychic, he probably would go for it at about this time because he has enough health to kind of handle me. Um, but really, I'm just like, I have to go for Giga Drains now because I want to save sludge, sludge Bomb PP for the grass types like Tropius. And overall, I hate my life here. I thought initially when I saw this Deoxys in the team preview, I was like, hey, that's kind of cool. I haven't seen one of these guys in forever. Immediate regret. I swear to God, over here swaying his arms like a dickhead. This guy is an absolute monster. But... After we speed through that section, he does end up switching out here. And of course, he switches into Steelix on a turn that I go for Sludge Bomb. I swear to God, I, I have no idea how he just knew that that was going to happen. Maybe he just decided to sack off Steelix, be able to get a switch into Gardevoir. He realized he's going nowhere quick against Vileplume, just staying in there recovering as I'm just going to get a critical hit eventually. But I go for the Giga Drain here. There's three minutes left in the match. The battle timer is getting down to it, boys, because he's being, he's, he's being stall guy with his recovering. Um, and of course, Steelix lives that with one. Gonna just make the battle go longer, of course. It would have been really nice to just grab that kill. Because, I'm thinking, I've seen that that Gardevoir is, I think it's Leftovers, so we don't see any specs, anything like a Choice Scarf, or anything like that more offensive set. So I'm hoping maybe it's actually not offensive. And at full health, Vileplume actually has a pretty solid chance to live a Psychic from this thing, even if uh, it's max invested in Special Attack. Listen to this. If this Gardevoir is modest nature, plus special attack, fully invested EVs and special attack, it has a 93.8% chance to kill Vileplume here with a Psychic. However, if it is timid, it does not have that good of a chance, and luckily for me, it looks like it is timid. Vileplume comes out on top. You cannot kill the smelly flower. We stay stinky out here, boys. And that is able to knock that thing out with a Sludge Bomb. And that is amazing. It wasn't, wasn't expecting Vileplume to pick up the KO on the Gardevoir, but thank God the Giga Drains put me in the position where it was able to happen. So now he gets a free switch, of course, brings in motherfucking Deoxys, and he takes some Stealth Rock damage. I'm thinking, okay, let's not go for a recover here. Uh, but of course, he goes for the recover. At this point, the match is going to end sooner or later. The timer is ticking. And Vileplume is still living, baby. <laughs> There's 60 seconds left in the match. I do end up getting the critical hit here. At the perfect time, however, 
that recover allowed him to just live that. So that's extremely annoying. Um, but we also know that this Deoxys cannot really touch me other than with a mirror coat. So I just stay in. I go for another sludge bomb here. He does actually end up going for the psycho shift. Now check this shit out. There's 40 seconds left, but I do get the absolute amazing satisfaction of killing this Deoxys. Sludge bomb takes it out. And ladies and gentlemen, I have out defensed the defensive team. All you need is one vile plume. I was able to take care of Steelix and the Deoxys defense, plus his only check to Vile Plume. So, if this isn't the best showing Vile Plume's ever had, I truly I don't know what is. Now, his last Pokemon is Tropius. There is 20 seconds left in the match. All he has to do is just switch into it and let me Sludge Bomb it uh, to kill it. But he's actually just going to let the timer run out. As I have more Mons left, he just has the Tropius. I also did still have... Uh, both Quillfish with Poison Jab and Rampardos with Head Smash in the back, so I would have been able to take it out even if uh, it knocked me out with an Air Slash. But luckily for Tropius, he does not have to face the Wrath of the Vile Plume today. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. I decided to post this one because this was a very interesting match, and uh, I hate Stall. But we came out on top because Vile Plume is an absolute legend. Let me get respects in the comments. See you later.